through Zoom? Uh, you don't have to, just leave it static. Okay, so what we have done here, we have brought the next level live stream that, uh, that has a higher threshold of energy and r radiant pulse current. So uh, after the research that we've done for the last couple of years, I decided to take it up a notch. And this allows us to do direct connect uh, with the with uh, natural elements, either here in the store or at sites, you know, that we get our opportunity to uh, test. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to create the entrance effect of the temples that, that usually have two obelisks when you walk through them. So when most people look at this, you know, from either mathematics, music, or anything, we can see this. And when this corridor is presented, it, it's either going to create a tuning fork effect. It looks like a tuning fork, but it also has an energy resonance. We've seen this at Karnak when, you know, we strike the broken one and how it tones just when one person impacts it. Solid, you know, multi-ton piece of uh, natural element, not hollow in any way, shape, or form. So when we slowly start to uh, uh, pursue this and, and we start to see more and more, so what we're going to see here is we're going to have a visible energy that's emitted uh, from the obelisks themselves. And if I recall, this is actually a limestone? Limestone, yes. Yeah, this is lime. This is one of the, what we call the superconductor elements. This is part of the outer casing of the Great Pyramid originally. And in our research, we found out how much energy it actually has the ability to, to, uh, to generate. So I'm going to take our little test lead here. And I'm going to turn it on, and you're going to hear the energy of the unit. Okay. Touch it, and we've got energy generating from it. It's, it's a very balanced energy. Now I'm just going to go, and I'm going to put the rod in between these, and see if you, if you hear the, 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 the variation in the, in the energy when I, when I put my hand down with it. So let's just... So you can hear how it, you know, it actually, it's, it's sensing it. Now see how loud it's getting? Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is putting that rod in between the two fields. If you're actually able to look, you can actually see, you know, like a warbling in the energy. And in between the two fields, you have to kind of learn how to, to uh, fix your eyes. Now what's happening here is that we're actually getting a plasma, you know, and if the lights were completely out, you'd actually see little spidering energy going from the rod to the natural elements. Now, is that really happening? Well, let me show you. So as you can see, we have a very interesting phenomenon happening here where these non-conductive materials are generating an incredible amount of energy just being in this field. And there are no tricks. There's no wire going to this. This is just in my hand. And now, it, you know, <laughs> if we bring it through, you can hear it, how it's amplifying. This element is getting louder and louder and louder the closer I get. It starts sounding like a tuning fork in itself. Back it out. It's quiet again. So that's a very interesting effect. So the alabaster, of course, being the superconductor it is, it's non-effective. If we laid this on here, again, there's hardly any exchange. This mm -hmm. absorbs more energy. Mm. It's putting it at some place that we haven't figured out yet. So again, we, we don't get the same reaction. So now, just to show that there's natural energy there, if, if they knew exactly how to harness, you know, get, uh, inert gases or noble gases, as you can see, this bulb is starting to line up, uh, light up, just being close to the field. You know, it's starting to glow. So if I get it really close, it'll light up and it might sting me though. And uh, let's, let's see. Yeah, see, so, you now we put it in between, it gets pretty bright. And that's quite a bit of natural illumination, just exciting the gases. Mm -hmm. You know, so if, uh, again, ancient understandings were utilizing a source of illumination that we haven't really gra uh, grasped, we know how to do it with electricity and, and vacuum. But again, we're seeing pretty impressive with no, with no cords you know, the illumination factor.
Wireless energy. Of wireless energy. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a first step. You know, again, they weren't using it the same way as we do. You know, but to illuminate, absolutely they were. So, but this is a fun one. As you can just see, this will just, this will emit energy all day. And of course, if we touch those, it would definitely, you know, let us know that there's a tremendous amount of energy. But then when we turn off the field, these are completely back to their normal state. That's a very good demonstration. Yeah, it's a good visual. Yes. And again, you know, when we're in this energy field, uh, as you've seen in some of my videos before, where we can transfer this energy through touch. Yeah. And we've seen uh, uh, simple uh, in the temples. We've seen that exchange of the of the onk or the or the or the key of life being yeah. sent to someone through a yeah. touch and it's receiving. Like energy. Yes, and yeah. we've seen col columns. We've seen the jet pillar. Yeah. Uh, and how the priests are standing there like this. Yeah. And the natural. Uh, reaction when someone comes into this energy is that they put their hands on it and uh, receives the energy. So when we do that, we get the same effect. You know, we want to touch it. And look what's happening when we touch it. We get the plasma effect. We get the streams of energy running it through our fingers. And it's completely harmless. You feel a little bit of warmth, but it's, it's not conductive in any way, shape, or I mean, it's not disruptive to us in any way, shape, or form. And this is also electromagnetic? Well, there's the, well, one of the key things about it is that when we're generating electricity, every, everything generates an electromagnetic field. That is yeah. just part of the, you know, the, the, uh, the life force yeah. you know, that we're dealing with here. So uh, when, uh, but there's an electro, there's a movement happening in here that's mm -hmm. actually allowing this to happen. So it's electromotive and electromagnetic. It's a combination. So there has to be a spinning element it's yeah. not solid state in any way, shape, or form. The device in here is about 80 years old. It's very rare. Yeah. You know, and, uh, it's not state-of-the-art technology. We had to go back in time to kind of understand this. Yeah. And once we did, once we, we kind of uh, reset our way of thinking, we were able to produce this, this phenomenon, or what we, some of us like to call it the missing link. You know, so we start putting larger pieces, and we put that cobra on top of this thing, it would put a huge you know, energy bolt. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that in part two. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. And cat. <laughs>